the glory of the beauty of the morning, the cuckoo crying over the untouched dew, the blackbird that has found it, and the dove that tempts me onto something sweeter than love, white cloud ranged even and fair as new morn hay, the heat, the stir, the sublime vacancy of sky and meadow and forest and my own heart, the glory invites me, and yet leaves me scorning. All I can ever do, all I can ever be, beside the lovely emotion, shape and hue. The happiness I fancy fit to dwell in beauty's presence. Shall I now this day begin to seek, as far as heaven as hell, wisdom or strength to match this beauty? Start and tread the pale dust pitted with small dark, dark drops, in hope to find whatever it is I seek. Hearkening to short-lived, happy-seeming things that we know naught of in the hazel corpse? Or must I be content with discontent, as larks and swallows are perhaps of wings? And shall I ask, at the day's end once more, what beauty is, and what I can have meant by happiness? And shall I let all go, glad, weary, or both? Or shall I perhaps know that I was happy oft and oft before, a while forgetting how I am fast pent, how dreary swift with naught to travel to, it's time, I cannot bite the day to the core. Okay, so now with all the fun animated artsy stuff out of the way, why don't we do some analysis? Okay, let's look at the first kind of quotation we've got going on here. Or must I be content with discontent, as larks and swallows are perhaps with wings? You see, birds are given wings, so it is assumed that they are likely to fly to survive. They have no choice, just as humans have to take um, what they are given. Wings, are per well, per se, are the key to their freedom. But all freedom comes kind of at a price, just as Thomas's freedom comes with discontent. The second quotation we're going to look at is, Shall I ask at the day's end once more what beauty is, and what I have meant by happiness? This is a rhetorical question, which could imply confusion as helplessness. He could be seeking out help unconsciously. Thomas attempts here to define indescribable qualities such as beauty and happiness, which are both abstract nouns, but kind of fails to. He could be implying that these qualities are incredibly subjective and therefore do not really exist, you know, the whole abstract noun aspect, and no one could actually be happy or beautiful. The third quotation is, or shall I perhaps know that I was happy oft enough before, a while forgetting how I am fast pent, how dreary swift, with naught to travel to, is time. From what we can infer, he used to be happy, but due to time, he hasn't really been able to realise or how to reflect on it. He compares the hurry of his thoughts with the infinity of time, and realises that different perceptions are inevitable. I cannot bite the day to its core. Thomas realising that day, represented as an apple, cannot be fully tasted as in i.e. to the core, and its seeds, the beauty within it, like seeds at the core of an apple, are forever hidden. The glory or beauty of nature surpasses even the most powerful, omniscient institution of the world, religion. A dove tempts Thomas. The dove is the Christian representation of the Holy Spirit, the unexplainable, impossible to described omniscient being, not dissimilar to the power and glory Thomas attributes to nature, which he cannot explain properly across the course of his poem. I cannot bite the day to its core, as we've mentioned before. The fact that the dove is tempting shows that there's restraint on his behalf, perhaps linked with his struggle to grasp poetry and confidence in his own writing. That his inability to express, express the glory of nature is his fault, rather than just because the glory is so magnificent. The cuckoo crying over the untouched dew. Thomas's poems are all linked with nature. This is evident in this continuity referral of birds. The cuckoo crying, the blackbird, the dove are all linked with aspects of the morning. 
cuckoo clock rings every hour, an indicator of time, you know, the time to rise. A blackbird reference to the morning as broken song, or a blackbird as calling, is another indicator of the morning, and a dove is a symbol of peace, as well as uh, the aforementioned Holy Spirit. A morning is meant to be serene and beautiful, and therefore the insignificance of everything, perhaps the war or Thomas' psychological issues, in contrast to the beauty of nature is pretty prevalent. Shall I now this day begin to seek, as far as heaven, hell, wisdom, or strength to match its beauty? Two of the most revered qualities in a person are totally disregarded in the face of this kind of beauty.